Just when we thought that OnePlus might never make smart watches again, bang, here it is, the OnePlus Watch 2. This is the company's first proper flagship smartwatch running Wear OS, and it fixes one of the biggest problems with smartwatches that we've had till date. And that's just telling half of the story because there's a really nice twist in the deal. Well, I'll tell you all about it, but stay tuned with me till the end. If you're here for the first time, I'm Ershad, you're watching Track and Tech English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. Now, first things first, the OnePlus Watch is definitely no head turner, even if OnePlus wants to think it is. It looks plain and mostly drab. It's like a regular looking, you know, round dial smartwatch. Of course, for the construction, OnePlus has used stainless steel, so it's a premium material, and it's available in two different colors. The one that we got for review is black, and the other one that's available is a natural, you know, stainless steel shade. And by default, you get this rubber strap. It's a very sporty strap, and it's of very good quality as well. It's thick and, you know, comfortable on the wrist. It doesn't you know, cause any sort of irritation either. But most importantly, the watch uses 22 millimeter lugs, so it's very easy to find an aftermarket third-party strap, so you can get a metal strap to sort of go with the metal look of the watch. But there's one thing that you guys need to note is that the watch is big, it's bulky, and it's thick. And no, I'm not talking about Sir Mix-a-Lot's obsession with the body part of the opposite gender. Get it? Get it? Get what I'm saying? And the bigger problem with this watch is that it is only available in this one single size and it's a 47 millimeter dial. Of course, it looks good on my hand, but I'm a big guy. And if anybody has dainty wrists and they wear this watch, it looks like, you know, David tried on Goliath's clothes just for fun. Now, like I said, it has a round dial, but on this side, there is a handle-like design. And on top of that is placed this button and at the bottom is another button. And the top button looks like it might be a crown because it sort of rotates, but there's no functionality. Look at this. And the button at the bottom is a multifunction button and it's a customizable button. I'll talk about all the customization options that are possible with both these buttons when I talk about the software uh, that is there on this watch. Anyway, talking about the design and the construction, the watch 2 actually meets the IP68 and 5 ATM standards, which means that, of course, you can take it swimming and use it to track your swimming data as well. Plus, it's also built to the American military standard of military standard 810H. So it's extremely sturdy. Even if I drop it, you don't have to worry about it breaking. And, you know, it's going to be very sturdy even in like extreme situations. Now, this display is a 1.43 inch display and it's a 60 hertz refresh rate panel as well. That apart, there's a 2.5D sapphire crystal glass on top, which protects it from, you know, scratches and drops as well. The display resolution on the watch is 466 by 466 and you also get a peak brightness of 1000 nits. In fact, we checked the System Info app and it's actually an HDR ready display. What I mean to say is that basically you take it outdoors and the watch is extremely bright and legible. You won't have any problem with the display quality itself or the brightness. Everything will be clear to see. But there are definitely a couple of problems that I noticed in my time with the watch is that it smudges very easily and the bezels, they are extremely thick. Now moving on to why the watch too uh, is thick is because OnePlus uses a dual chip solution to solve the battery problems. Yes, you get the Snapdragon W5 performance chip for when the watch is running Wear OS and you get the BES 2700 efficiency chip for when the watch is running RTOS. Now this dual chip solution is paired with a 500 mAh battery for fantastic battery life. So by default on the watch itself, you get two power modes. There's a smart mode and there's another one called power saver mode. In the smart mode, the watch understands that, you know, when you're running Wear OS or you're running apps on the watch itself, that it requires more performance. So it sort of uses a Snapdragon and W5 chip for performance. And all the background activity and daily tasks are offloaded to the BES 2700 efficiency chip. It's a very, very smart move by OnePlus if you ask me. No mainstream brand has done it yet. Maybe some other brands could have implemented this already, but this is a smarter way to do it because with the smart mode on, you can actually expect 100 hours of battery life according to OnePlus. In fact, I got more than 100 hours of battery life in my testing. Now, if you use always on display and if you use the Facer app for custom watch faces, which has a lot of animations and maybe you push the watch for performance with a lot of different apps as well, then you can expect two days of battery life. And even then in my testing, I got slightly more than two days of battery life. I'm glad that OnePlus is going with conservative estimates because the battery life on this watch is absolutely phenomenal. And say, for example, you switch on the power saver mode and you're using the watch only in RTOS, then you can expect 12 days of battery life. And this power saver mode is not like completely crippling. You do get access to a lot of features and functions of the watch. For example, you can take and make Bluetooth calls. You can also access fitness features like swimming and badminton and other essential uh, features like sleep tracking and heart rate tracking. All of that is possible too. 
The point I want to make is that the Watch 2 is genuinely a battery monster and I'm glad that OnePlus went ahead and solved that problem for us. Now with the battery life being so good, I expected the performance to be, you know, stuttery, but that's not really the case. And I'm really surprised by the performance tuning that has been done on the OnePlus Watch 2. Because if you take a look at it, it's smooth, it's fast, and it's pretty responsive as well. And this is possible because the Snapdragon W5 is a proper quad-core chip. Now in comparison, the Exynos W930 that is inside the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 and the Watch 6 Classic is actually a dual core chip. And in my testing, I noticed that the Watch 6 Classic actually stutters slightly more than the OnePlus Watch 2. In fact, I played games like Watch Steroids and Energy Anti-Stress Loop and the Watch 2 was very, very smooth at playing those games. And I'm surprised by the quality of games that are available on Wear OS right now. The, now the Wear OS 4 experience that we had on the OnePlus Watch and the Samsung Galaxy Watch is slightly different. Now, before I talk about that, the Watch connects to your Android phone with the OHealth app. And if you're wondering if the OHealth app is available on iPhone and if it works with the iPhone, then it doesn't. So basically when you start the watch, you will see the watch face and when you long press the watch face, you can see all the different watch faces and you can change it to whatever you want. And of course you can keep adding new watch faces from uh, you know the OHealth app itself. I'll be very honest, the watch faces that OnePlus has are pretty average. I didn't like any of them, but then there is Facer out there. So yeah, I mean, that's problem solved. And when you swipe up from the watch face, you can see all the notifications. When you swipe down from the watch face, you can see the control center, which gives you access to all the quick settings. When you swipe left or swipe right from the watch face, then you can see all the tiles that are there. Now this gesture function is slightly differently tuned on the Samsung watch. Now, like I mentioned, the multifunction button at the bottom, by default, it opens the fitness tracking options. But if you want, you can customize it to do whatever you like for not just the single press, but also double press. Now, of course, coming to that fake crown button, when you press it, you open up the app list. And this app list looks very familiar, doesn't it? Yes, it's very inspired from Apple's. Now, if you thought OnePlus was inspired by the Apple Watch, well, you can long press it, and then you can make the inspiration to be of Samsung Watch. Look at this. In fact, if you long press it, then that grid view can also be changed to a list view. So basically, there's a familiar app list view option for everybody out there. I, of course, prefer the planet view, so I kept it to that. And of course, you get access to the Play Store and the plethora of, you know, Wear OS watch apps that are out there. So I've been using apps like Todoist, Spotify, Google Keep a lot on this watch. There's also a keyboard that's available, so you can type properly, you can even swipe type, and it works very fluidly. Absolutely no problem. Now this is a proper, proper smartwatch. So you can actually make and receive calls uh, using the Bluetooth function. But this watch is not available in an LTE option, which is a huge letdown if you ask me. Primarily because I would have loved to use this bigger watch with so many features untethered. That would have been awesome, right? But alas, that's not available. What's also not present on the Watch 2 is any sort of payment option because of the Galaxy Watch 6, you can use Samsung Pay, Samsung Wallet. But the Google Pay, Google Wallet integration right now is currently not available in India. If you are in any other country, if you're watching this from any other country, then maybe that option will be available for you. Finally, let's talk about the fitness tracking and the health tracking features. And I must say this, OnePlus has done a stellar job with the Watch 2. Again, I was pleasantly surprised. For example, I checked my SPO2 levels on the Watch 6 Classic and I checked it on the Watch 2 as well and I got the same 96% score. I even checked my heart rate and it was like 71 uh, BPM on the OnePlus Watch 2 and 72 BPM on the Watch 6 Classic. But the best part was that we actually tested the step counting capabilities of the Watch 2 against the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. Now we walked 1000 steps and we actually manually counted those 1000 steps. And after that, the OnePlus Watch 2 showcased 998 steps and the Watch 6 Classic showcased 980 steps. So Watch 2 is definitely far more accurate at step tracking. Plus you get dual band, you know, L1 plus L5 GPS support. So, you know, extreme athletes who sort of go trekking to some places where, you know, you cannot latch onto GPS network easily. The OnePlus Watch 2 can do that as well. Sleep tracking on the Watch 2 is absolutely fantastic too. It accurately maps the time that you've slept and gives you, uh, you know, details of light sleep, deep sleep, REM. Plus it also, you know, gives you information on what you need to improve and how you need to improve your sleep cycle as well. It can also monitor if you're snoring in the night. So all of that is available on the watch. I did also track my morning walks with the Watch 2 and I noticed that the Watch 2 was fairly accurate. At least that's what I would like to presume considering the step tracking is pretty accurate. And the kind of information that I got was also pretty useful. I got information of the elevation, the peak, my heart rate variance, and of course the cadence as well. And there are a ton of other workouts that you can track. And OnePlus has been, you know, talking a lot about the badminton mode. So basically it can track bat swing and all of that, which is pretty cool, I feel. My only gripe with the way OnePlus has tuned the health metrics on the app is the gamification that it does 
for these health metrics. And it's very similar to what Apple does because it also believes in closing rings. So it doesn't have a unique identity or a unique method in which it wants to make you want to work out of it. And so I would have preferred some more creativity from the OnePlus smartwatch engineers, but I'm guessing that they want to make it comfortable for Apple Watch users to make the switch as well. So in conclusion, the Watch 2 is priced at Rs. 24 9 in India. I generally expected OnePlus to price it slightly more aggressively, maybe around the 20,000 price mark so that they can hit the competition hard. And also considering the fact that it doesn't have an LTE option. But considering the dual chip, the performance that is on offer, the size of the watch, and uh, of course, the fitness tracking metrics, and most importantly, the fantastic battery life, I feel 24999 is warranted for the watch. In fact, if you look at it, the Watch 6 Classic, which is the same size as the you know, OnePlus Watch 2, is far more expensive. But of course, the Watch 6 itself is not as expensive. And when you're talking about OnePlus Watch 2 solving the battery life problem, I think OnePlus has hit the bullseye, primarily because there are a lot of people who are still on the fence about moving to a smartwatch from an analog watch because of, they don't want to charge yet another device every day. And I used to be one of them as well. And I switched to the Apple Watch Ultra 2 because it gave me steady two days of battery life and I didn't have to charge it often. But now with the OnePlus Watch 2, for the Android folks, this is definitely a fantastic option. The battery life is genuinely very, very good. I do have a few suggestions for OnePlus for when they make the next iteration of this, of this watch. Firstly, they need to offer an LTE option, that's for sure. Secondly, there needs to be a smaller version of the watch. Also try to make the watch slimmer if possible and maybe make it look slightly more attractive. Reduce the bezel size so that you know you get more screen estate as well. And finally, if you're giving a crown that rotates, make it functional. That would have been better. All right, so this was my review of the OnePlus Watch 2. What do you guys think of it? Are you going to buy one or not? I'd love to know your thoughts. And that apart, if you have any suggestions for OnePlus, then do put them in the comment section below. If they read it and implement it, that'd be awesome, right? All right, that's it from me for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.